The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 16. Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Recorded on August 22nd, 1973, in London, England. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent there is no endurance, and of the existent there is no cessation. This seers have concluded by studying the nature of both. There are two things, soft and awesome. Soft means which exists, and awesome means which does not exist. Temporarily it appears and again disappears. That is also. The example is just like the sky and the cloud. Cloud appears, exists for some time, again disappears. But the sky remains always. This is the distinction between hot and hot. Try to <coughs> sky, this material sky, this also does not exist, but so far our experience is concerned, we can understand the distinction between short and also, permanent and temporary. We cannot say non-existent exactly. Existing, when the cloud comes, it has got some activities, there is rainfall, and an account of rainfall on the ground, there is some new vegetation, new flowers, uh, everything looks very green in the rainy season. We get some. Uh, products. So we cannot say it is false, but we can say it is temporary. <coughs> Similarly, material world, matter, is not false, uh, but it is non-permanent. Bhutta Mutra Pradiyat will find it in Bhagavad Gita. The Mahavadi philosopher says, Brahma Sattva Jagat Mitra. The spirit is truth, and Jagat, this material world, is untrue, Mitra, false. We say, that everything is emanating from the Supreme. Jatobhaimani Bhutani Jayanti, everything is emanating from Brahma, the Supreme Absolute Truth. So that cannot be false, because Absolute Truth, how from truth false will come? This is our truth. Uh, the matter may be temporary, but it is not false. Uh, uh, the basic injunction is ma asato, ma asato, sadgama. Don't try to be entangled with the asat, sadasat. But try to uh, come to the platform of thought. In the previous verse, Jangnina Bhatanti Te Purusam Purusal Krishna says, those who are not disturbed by the uh, material changes, Samar, Dukha, Sukham, Dhiram, 
platform of Amritattva, immortal. They have discussed this point. Uh, Amritattva, immortal. The modern civilization, the so-called scientists, philosophers, they cannot imagine even that there is possibility of becoming immortal. They cannot imagine. And that brain is so dull that they cannot think of that we can become immortal. Then how Krishna is speaking about immortality? Is he speaking something nonsense, utopia? No, he is speaking with fact. Uh, otherwise, if Krishna speaks something nonsense, utopia, then nobody would be interested to read Bhagavad Gita. We may be third class men uh, that we indulge in Bhagavad Gita and Krishna speaking something utopian nonsense. But there are big, big acharyas, Ramanucharya, Madhacharya. Why they are giving attention to the reading of Bhagavad Gita? Uh, Krishna does not speak anything nonsense. The fact, if it is the fact that there is possibility of becoming immortal, that is short. Uh, short our business should be to be engaged in the short platform, not in the short platform. Short platform non-permanent or so according to somebody's opinion, false. Uh, so false or non-permanent, whatever it may be, uh, the real uh, human civilization should be based on the purpose of uh, becoming immortal, soft, not asap. Uh, that is the distinction between uh, India and other countries. Uh, now I'm not speaking of India of today, but India as it is, uh, uh, big, big acharyas, uh, just like bad. That they will do in an acharya. Therefore, uh, the birthday of Guru is called Bash Puja. Bash Puja. Bash Puja means uh, original Guru. Guru is the representative of Bash Dev. This uh, throne is called Bash Asana. Uh, sitting place of Vyasri. So, one who is representative of Vyasri, he can sit on this throne. So, Guru, uh, by parampara system, Guru uh, is seated on the Vyasasana because he is the representative. Just like in a high court, the bench, it is called bench. Actually, the bench is uh, to be used by the head of the executive power, the king or the president. Uh, but the high court judge is the representative of the head executive. Therefore, he sits on that bench. So, that day, uh, 
So learned a scholar, everyone knows how great scholar he was. He has written so many books. Uh, uh, four Vedas, eighteen Puranas, then Vedanta Sutra, uh, then Upanishad. So many. Recorded, not written. Recorded. So such a big scholar was uh, residing, he was guiding the whole society, but he was living very humbly. Uh, even Chanakya Pandit, he was prime minister, but he was living in a court. That is the distinction between Vedic or Indian civilization and the modern civilization. Uh, the Indian civilization means they are interested in thought, and others they are interested in asat. Asat means which will not exist. I was already explained. Uh, yeah. In India, of course, materially, uh, five hundred, uh, five thousand years ago, uh, materially also, India was very opulent, five, five thousand years. Even five hundred years or four hundred years, India was so opulent that Europeans were attracted to go to India. Even the, during the time of Mughal Empire, uh, it was so opulent. Those who have gone to India will find, if you visit the, in Delhi, uh, the Red Fort, Red Fort will find there are pictures of birds and trees on the wall, and the eyes of the bird is now whole, uh, or some parts, means it was bedecked to jewel. On the wall uh, there is uh, decoration of bars just like we paint now. There is also paint, uh, but that is not painting, set up with stone. <coughs> And the eyes and other parts of the bird of trees, flowers, they are bedecked with different types of jewels. Now all these jewels have been taken away when British government was there. And they are now protected in the British Museum. So far I've heard. But the jewels are taken away. That's a fact. Anyone can see that. So, uh, material opulence and of course uh, in India, it was not considered to have a big tin car or plastic plates. Uh, material opulence means jewels, gold, silk, butter, that is material. Uh, not plastic pots or plastic bucket, plastic cloth. Uh, there is no value. So anyway, uh, India was concerned material of lands, whatever is gotten from the nature, not by industry, not engaging oneself in industry. <coughs> Therefore, India, the leaders of India now, they are finding that on account of our negligence to the material side of life, we have become uh, poor. Uh, so the purpose is that the Eastern-West difference is that the Eastern people, Eastern people means India, uh, they stress on this short portion, the permanent portion, the spiritual civilization. 
Their aim was how to make this life perfect so that I can become immortal. As I explained the other day. Oh, his tongue, just punat janma jaya, just tat punat janma jaya. The whole effort was how to conquer over birth and death. The modern people, they do not understand that birth and death can be conquered. They can imagine it. Sometimes they say that by scientific advancement, someday we shall become immortal. They also expect to become immortal. But expect or not expect, here is the information from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, he is not speaking something nonsense or utopian. It is fact that uh, oh, we should be interested in the permanent, permanent life, not temporary life. This life, this material life is temporary. Uh, we may live for ten years or ten hours. There are living entities, they live for ten minutes. And there are living entities who are living for ten millions or ten billions of years. Just like in the Brahma uh, They live billions of years. So all this duration of life, different types of duration of life, are there within this material world. But still it is not forward. Even if you live for ten billions of years, or you live for ten minutes or ten seconds, it is not forward. That is being explained here. Na asata vidyati bhava asata of this material body. It has no endurance. It will not endure. It will not be permanently existing. No bhava vidyati sataha. And the soul is permanent. It has no change. It will never be non-existent. Krishna is explaining. When Krishna says, my dear Arjuna, you, me, and all these kings and soldiers who have assembled here, it is not that we did not exist in the past. So what is that? That means we are not this body. This body was not existing in the past, in my past life, or duration of life. But as I am soul, I am existing now. I did exist in the past, and I will exist in the future. That is all. Therefore, a spirit has no such change. Narthandha Sato has sung, Sakasanga chari kainu asate vila, tikarane lagilo mor karma bandha phaan. Karma bandha phaan means internal. Sometimes you have got experience that threats, they become internal. It is very difficult to find out where the beginning is. Sometimes why? So, on account of our attachment, to this material body, we are becoming entangled. Sakasanga sari kainu asate vila. This meeting, as we are holding, this is called satsanga. Satsanga, because here there is no other business talking a nonsense, some material thing. Here only we talk about the spirit soul, about Krishna, about relationship with Krishna, how to act to satisfy Krishna. This is the business here. That is the difference. Uh, formerly this uh, uh, place, manor, was known as Pigos manor. Now we have named Bhaktivedanta manor. What is the difference? Formerly it was for sense gratification. Now it is meant for 
elevating one to the spiritual standard of life. Uh, anything uh, can be changed like that. Or satsanga. Uh, <coughs> satsanga mukta dusanga. If you continue, sata, as it is said, satsanga, then you advance in spiritual life. And if you associate with asa, then you become degraded. This is the problem. Satasanga chari kainu asa te vilas te karane lagilamor karnamantra. Don't be entangled. Try to become liberated from the entangled. That is the mission of life. So these things cannot be understood. So long we are in the darkness. Darkness means sinful life. The more we are engaged in sinful life, uh, we cannot understand uh, what is satsanga and what is asasanga. So we should be purified. Uh, the whole human life is meant for purification. Uh, Jasma suddhi to satya. Satya. Satya means existence. Suddhi. Suddhi means becomes purified. Just like a diseased man, contaminated by some disease. The medical treatment means he has to be purified from the contamination. Similarly, we are impure in this material existence. By contamination are the three more samasyas. Satagana, Rajagana, Tamagana. Goodness, passion, and uh, ignorance. See, even if we are contaminated by the quality of goodness of this material world, that is also contaminated. That is also cause of power in government. Uh, uh, goodness. Uh, uh, Brahma. If he thinks that now I have Brahminical qualification, I am now educated, I am very clean, I am very controlled, this is a Brahminical qualification. I know what is what, jnanam, vijnanam. Uh, but he does not uh, try for becoming immortal then that kind of thinking is also bonded. That I am this, I am that. Even though he is very learned, sattva sama dhamma suti suchi, all these good qualities are there. But if he does not try to be, go further ahead, how to become immortal, so this type of fine entanglement is also entanglement. Uh, and those who are passionate, they are thinking, I am so rich, I am so powerful, I have got so many nice business, bank balance, I have got my big family, nice wife. These are passion conception of life. So they are certainly bound up. And those who are ignorant, uh, uh, means one does not know what is the value of life. Uh, Lying down anywhere, lazy, sleeping, unclean, do not know the value of life, there is ignorance. They are very firmly bound up. So liberation means the more you are enlightened, the value of life, the more, then you become liberated. The more you become, Liberated, the more you are advanced in your uh, spiritual knowledge, sattva, uh, sat, satsang. Therefore, these meetings which we hold every day, uh, they are meant for advancing in spiritual life. Here there is no program how to become very rich, how to possess more motor cars, how to 
have more bank balance, have to have nice dress. These are material things. Or uh, ignorance, how to sleep uh, 34 hours a day, although you have got 24 hours. Uh, so here we see big, big men, they sleep after 2 o'clock. Uh, early rising means 2 o'clock. Uh, that is also early, but not at day two, 2 o'clock. At night, two o'clock, if you rise, that is nice. But they are accustomed to get up two o'clock because uh, they think the more we sleep, we enjoy life. Uh, and therefore, they are uh, sunyavadi. They want to become zero, sleeping always. Sunyavadi. Make everything zero. That is called sunyavadi. <coughs> no, that is not life. Sunnavadi is not. Activity is life. Kirtanya Sadahari, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, don't become zero, uh, but be engaged always in chant Hare Krishna Mahaprabhu. That is Krishna, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Correct. We are not going to be zero. We want to be very active. But active, not for sense education, but for Krishna's service. Now what is Krishna's service? That you are teaching how to worship Krishna. Samanam kirtanam vishnu, smaranam pāra-sevanam, archanam bandhanam rāstam, sakham māsu nivīdhanam. These are nine kinds of services. They are soft. The more we are engaged in these nine kinds of different occupations of devotional service, the more we are uh, elevated. And the more we are uh, engaged in activities of material self gratification, we are degraded. Uh, you have got nice office material point of view, nice business. So if you perform that business, office work, your duty very nicely, but you have no Krishna consciousness. The Shastra says that samayavai kevalam, it is simply wasting time and laboring hard, that's all. Therefore, Krishna says, and this is the distinction between short and also. Uh, and we should not be very much interested with the also, then our life is spoiled. We should be interested with so. That will make our life success. Then we make progress for Amrita. Unfortunately, people at the present moment, they do not know, neither they can imagine it that there is possibility of becoming immortal. Uh, this is a very important point. There is not possibility, there is fact. And Krishna, Gita, uh, 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 is so important. This has to, many places it is said. Gita Nadeva Krishna sa mukta sangha param bhajit. The param is, means, a spiritual. There are two kinds of para and apara prakriti. Apara prakriti, para prakriti. Aparayam. Yam, this material word, is apara, inferior energy. It has to give them a prakriti in para. Besides this, there is another prakriti, another nature, which is para. Para means spiritual. So we should be interested with the para, not with the opera. Uh, why? Uh, that is real life. That is real life. Here it is said, Ubhayarapu, considering both this para and opera, the superior and inferior. Tattadarsivi, who is steady, Tattadarsivi. Tattva means those who have 
realize the truth properly. Uh, and you find this word, tapta, in various places. Tapta. Manishanam sahasrishu kashti jatati siddhai jatatanati siddhanam kashti dhritti ma tapta. In another place, dharma karma medibham jujanati tapta. Tatoma jatya visati tatantra vatyama abhijanati javan jasyami tatva. This word tatva is very important. Tatva means the absolute truth. True. Tatva means true. In the Bhagavata, it is fine. Vadanti tat tatva vida tatva. Tatva vida. Those who are aware of the truth, they call this tattva. What is that tattva? Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Sabda. The tattva is called sometimes Brahma, sometimes Paramatma, and sometimes Bhagavan. The Bhagavan is the last word of tattva. Therefore, you will find in every stanza, Vaisdev is writing, but he is writing, Sri Bhagavanubhasa. Don't think that this is. That although I am writing, I am not the speaker. The speaker is the Supreme Personality of God. Sri Bhagavanubhasa. The authority is the Supreme Personality of God. Not I. Uh, the modern so called philosophers, scientists, scholars, they say, I think, I think. So what is their value? Uh, they, great personalities, they will not say like that. Uh, never they will say. Uh, therefore, Krishna will say, Tattva It has been concluded by higher authorities. He is himself operating. Still, he is not speaking that I say. No. Uh, sometimes he says, Motama uh, that is my opinion. Uh, but he is also following the principle of a rhetoric. Tattva Dasivi. Tattva Dasivi Samta. Ubhayarapi Drishtya Anta. Confused. Uh, all the Krishna is saying that this is sat and this is asa, this is permanent and this is non permanent. But still, he is giving evidence that tattva those who have seen the truth, they are concluded like that. Uh, this is, uh, means authority. They are concluded like that. Don't, if you, don't think that I am manufacturing something. No, tattva darsivi. This is the way of understanding. By that possible, we also give reference sometimes in the modern age that such and such professor says such and such. But they are not tattvadarsi. They are all speculated. They are not tattvadarsi. But we have to go to the tattvadarsi. Tadvidhi panipatena pariprasnena sivaya. Upadakshanti uh, tad jnana, jnana tattva darsi. So this tattva darsi, tattva, this word you should learn very nicely. That, that is authoritative. And others, uh, they are not authoritative. They simply speculate. Uh, speculation means mental platform. It has no value. Uh, as this body is also non permanent. The mind is also flickering. Mind is flickering, accepting something and rejecting something. The same thing, now accepted, again rejected. This is mind's business. So, uh, mind cannot be thought to us. Of course, you have to think with mind. But under the direction of authority, then we can reach real thought. Padanti tattva vidastatyam dadgyana maddayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavani ki sabdha. The bhagavan is the last word of tattva. Thank you.